Hello everybody, welcome back to the final nine holes of the 2019 Majestic, brought to you by Parsafe Productions here, I'm Kale Laviska, joined by my good friend Mitch Privet. Hello, hello. We got a great round so far, we see Kevin Jones playing strong, Matt Bell throwing it in from everywhere, myself and Matty Orem trying to keep pace. And here we are, we have another island shot. You can always lay up short of this moat right here, but everything past the ditch, you have to be inside the circle green or you go to the drop zone. And it was nice and calm today, so it's a no-brainer. We're all gonna be going for this island. You see me on the box throwing an H1, get it out nice and wide. Feeling good about that one. We got the, the sizable gallery growing every single hole, so yeah. the pressure keeps mounting more and more. And Matt Bell follows my line nice and wide. Great shot from Matt. That's how you do it. 280 feet. It's a hole we obviously all want to get, but you know, anytime you add in the stress factor of having to put it on the island it makes it a little bit more difficult and we do have a couple guardian trees in front that make you go out wide around it yeah, yeah. great shot Maddie -o. And with this thick grass up here at BRP the Ray Jordans this is what they do they cultivate lawns and, and sod so pretty much if you land on this green you're gonna stick it it's nice and thick grass doesn't allow for a lot of skips which is Really nice feature to have for an island. Pretty fair. Great shot by Kevin. Got me lining up. I'm about 15 feet away and I'm furthest out. So it just shows you how strong those drives were. Someone really loved that putt. <laughs> well, it was in the heart. <laughs> Yeah, this lead card, we were making it look pretty easy, but yeah, definitely uh, a difficult hole. You're not going to see a lot of groups get uh, get four twos on this one, that's for sure. That OB stake in there. Yep, you got, you got the circle green around it, not much more. Coming up to beautiful hole number 20. You can see we're up here elevated on the tee shot. Got our nice landscape green, or I'm sorry, landscape tee shot that, uh, that they built out here. You cross this ditch over the bridge. So it's a long, it's a long hole. It's very easy to come up about 40, 50 short, even for a lot of the top pros. A lot of the bigger arms love this hole because they can reach it easier, but in my mind, this is still a bonus too. It's, it's a hard one to get to. I wanted to get a little bit of turn on this one flat. I kind of just came hyzer out of my hand so you could see I'm coming up about 50 feet short. Hmm. Still a good rip out there though. Matt Bell blasting on one, got this thing nice and flat and you can see this push forward a lot longer. Much more ideal line. And yeah. Put him just inside the circle there. You know, this hole has been aced before. Joe Ikeer, right? Yep. We got a local legend. Joe Ikeer has, has got the hole in one on this hole before, which is just a bomb. And Matt doesn't fully get his wide enough. Looks like his leaking left. He's going to have a long putt. I'd say one of the, the many strengths to, to Kevin Jones' game is his hyzer game, so he's got great hyzer power. And you can see him just making wow. some pretty easy work out of this hole. That is yeah. gorgeous. I 
I gotta look, but a long one here. I'm trying to get this up and in. <laughs> you can see I'm not too stoked about that one. <laughs> it's tough to watch for me. Yeah. I always get that way when I watch that too. Maddie not giving it a much better run than I did. Bell got about a 25 footer. Yeah. Not quite his happy place of being outside the circle, <laughs> yeah. but he's been cleaning these up as well. Yes, sir. Super smooth. And that putter is hot. <laughs> a little joking. And Kevin Jones still not out. And still not out. <laughs> That's how you there do it right is. there. We got Kevin maintaining his lead on Matt Bell. Six strokes. Coming into the last seven holes, that's a pretty pretty safe lead, but we still do have some difficult shots coming up, including this next one right here. Another super tight tunnel. We're throwing in the woods for about, I don't know, three quarters of the hole, and then we get out in the open. And the basket is essentially straight, but a little bit tucked right. So that ditch right there comes into play. That's all out of bounds. If you turn it a little too much or get it too low, easy to find that ditch. And it's also easier to hyzer off left. So very difficult too. And Matt Bell, Just makes he actually it missed the gap a little bit to the right, but he found one of those inside lines and gets himself a good look at it. So with the six stroke lead, he puts a little bit of pressure on Kevin because this is a difficult drive. And you can see that's too low. Yep, that's too low. He caught those cattails, which means that is going to be out of bounds. I'm throwing my, uh, my H4V2 again for a little flip up and it's looking perfect. And I just catch the one tree you got to get by right yeah, there. Yeah, those two guardians right there of the last gap. I'm really not too disappointed with that shot though. There's, there's a lot Land of right in the middle there? Yep, I did. Yep. It, it luckily didn't kick right or left, so yeah. I'll be looking right at the basket. And Maddie turns his over a little bit. But it actually stays short of the out of bounds, so he'll be uh should be able to get up and down pretty easily. Oh, I see where you landed now. Yeah, that's definitely yeah, this I would definitely be okay with that miss. Yeah. <laughs> Looking right at the basket, giving it a run. Great shot, though. Yeah, able to save my par pretty easily right there. So from where he is, this is a pretty tall bush. You probably can't even see the basket from there, but a little pitch up, up and around. So yeah, we got up here and found out that Kevin was out of bounds. He's gonna take his relief and try to throw one in. So now we got Matt. If he can hit this putt from outside the circle, he's gonna close the gap a little bit further and get within four strokes. And after seeing what he's been doing. He's gotta yes, sir. He's just gotta think that it's in already. Jeez. This is just amazing, you guys. I, it's such a cool round to watch. He's already hit about 10, 10 shots outside the circle, which is just unbelievable. Yeah. You can see these beautiful new Prodigy baskets that BRP got last year, especially powder coated with the BRP blue.
And we gotta get we gotta battle right now. Four strokes. As you can see here, we have a lot of danger. This this is just a beautiful iconic hole out here. Landscape rock green with red mulch. With a huge pond right in front of it. It's very well placed. If you don't get it up in the air, you're very likely to find it in there and yeah, you definitely got to keep it up a little bit more because even with those small rocks on the front side of the green, I've definitely seen people hit those rocks, come back, go right back yeah, into true. that pond, you know. And if you do go in the pond, you are going to a drop zone, which is on the short side of the pond. So pretty much a guaranteed four if you, if you land in there. Yep. But also those back rocks behind the green, if you go blazing by it and you go low, you know. True. You can get a nice little kick to the basket or something or stay on the green. I wanted this to hold so bad, but I just didn't put quite enough steam on it. That thing hyzered yeah. off on me. No danger back there, though. It's a pretty standard three, but kind of takes the two out of play. Yeah. Pretty thick. <laughs> yep. Low ceiling putt. Just kind of a pitch out. Kevin opting for the M4. This is a good distance to get to this hole with the mid-range, but he's got plenty of D to cover that pond. Give himself to about 40 feet. This is one of the, mo the more beautiful greens that you'll see in all of disc golf. He's got those jagged rocks that kind of sculpt the circle of the green. Julio! Julio! If you don't know Matty Orham, he loves the he loves the, the Alabama Crimson Tide football program, so he looks like he named that disc after Julio Jones. All the Bama. <laughs> <laughs> There's Matty having to offer a little horseshoe putt right there. Was it a tough spot? You can hear people joking about that might go in. <laughs> That is just huge right yeah. there. Yeah. There it is. It was getting a little bit close, four strokes, and Kevin was able to extend it to five. That was a big momentum putt right there. Yeah, well done. Absolutely. Oh. Ooh. That one floated on him a little bit, obviously. He's actually got a little bit of work coming back now, too. Look at that pond. It doesn't even look like a pond. <laughs> it looks like another grass, you know, they it cut does. off. So much duckweed on it. I'll tell you, there's a big old snapping turtle in that pond right oh, there. Oh, yeah. Got to be 100 years old. Jake Lobber went in right after the first round. <laughs> Got his disc back, though. And about 25 more. <laughs> I'll bet, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the nice thing about BRP is if you throw in any of these ponds, they got people going in. They got a huge loss and found in the pro shop that you can usually get your disc back. So put your name and number on them if you play here. It's such a cool shot, though. Kevin Jones getting the low and two on this difficult par three. Hole 23. We got a tunnel shot off the tee. The basket is is pretty decently left of the fairway, but you don't want to be fooled. A good straight shot on this will get you a putt at it. You see a lot of people make the mistake of Heiser off too early, trying to trying to park the hole. When I think the play is to just throw in nice and straight, straight and let here. it just finish left at the very end. Get yourself a look. Yeah. Kevin kind of saws it off, but he gets up there to about a 40, 45 foot putter. A difficult look. <laughs> That's how you do it. Right there. Yeah. Matt Bell absolutely <laughs> parking the hole. That was perfect. He, yeah, Matt and myself are both opting for a, a fairway driver. I'm throwing my H3. Throw it straight up the middle and then just let it die out left. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Beautiful shot. <laughs> Gotta love the hometown crowd out here. How he's rooting for me. I appreciate it very much. Mm. 
Like, yeah, Maddie O. Opting for the forehand, forehand roller, which is roller. what we saw Ricky do a couple years ago when when Ricky and Nate Sexton had that epic playoff battle. I remember Ricky parked this both both rounds with the forehand roller. I've never seen anyone do that though. I mean it is there. I know it's there for sure. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't know how to do it. <laughs> no clue. Kevin, not stoked about that, but it was definitely a difficult putt. Matty O saving par. I couldn't even see Matt Bell's disc. It was so close to the, the hole behind those <laughs> yeah. bricks right there. So There we go. Good birdie. It's always nice when you can do a little lefty putt, tap in, the hole, drop in. Yeah. You can see even this hole, which is pretty basic, has got a nice sculpted green. A lot of fine details out here that, that make this course what it is. Hole 24, it's right there for you. You can see it from the tee. You are pinched a little bit with some trees on the left side of the tee pad, so it forces you to go out right. And with this distance, it's one that we can all get, but it's still one you gotta definitely commit and throw hard to get it up there. Here we go, just outside the circle, which is where he likes to be. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. Perfect for Matt Bell. I'm reaching for my beefy blue D2, which which my boy Paul Uliberry gave to me a couple months ago. Nice shot. Yeah, I got that to about 30 feet. Nice shot. Should be a, a pretty basic hyzer for Kevin, who's who loves this shot. Yeah, a little bit short left, but just fine. It's a funny course because you know this is a shot that all of us are obviously pretty dialed in at at the top professional level. But when you play so many straight wooded shots, then you have to come out into the open, open and just rip yeah. on a hyzer. Yeah, the muscle memory is a little bit off. Like, what's a hyzer? I've been throwing all these straight shots. <laughs> I mean, ah, oh. oh. yeah, Matt. He he even walked that off, but decided that he was just inside the circle, and yeah, you could tell just pulled that one a little bit. That pains me right there. You got to give that a chance. Get yeah. it up. Just like Matty O does. I do like this position, though. I like where the hole is, you know, um, off the tee. The, the tree that makes you even push out even farther um, than what it really needs to be. Yeah, I do, too. This, was, this one was about 100 feet right, and... Pretty oh. easy. Oh, as you can see, Kevin comes in right side. He came in right side and popped it out. That's going to be a, a par for for everybody but Matt Orham right there. That's a little disappointing. That's one we all want to get, obviously. Yeah, but the hole still makes you work for it. There we got the Mando tree that we we're talking about, just left of the tee pad. And 
And now for the for the third time in the round, we're we're right back by that snack shack that we talked about. So coming to the end of the round, if you need to, you can grab a burger, a hot dog, or some food, some beverages. I know I do every time. And close out these <laughs> last three holes, hole 25. A fairly short shot. Ray has uh, placed this tree right in the middle of the fairway to make it a little more difficult. You gotta choose to go above it or below it. I think all of us are gonna be going over. Very good shot by Matt. It's a touchy shot because you almost have to get a little bit of Annie out of the hand yeah. to, to be able to hit this fairway on the right side, but it's pretty easy to, to turn it over too much and clip trees, so being a pretty short hole, it's definitely uh, still a tough birdie. Yep, he hits the tree right in the middle of the fairway. I've been really like enjoying throwing my 400 series PA3s a little bit more overstable so I can put a little bit of force turn on them. Just like that. Oh yeah, nice shot. Yeah. And Kevin saw me throw putter. I think he's opting for the same thing except a PA2. He's very good putter thrower as well. Butter. Oh, nice. Matt from about 100 feet. <laughs> oh. I mean, giving him a that's great unbelievable. I mean, run. Matt, you know, is known as a pitch put pitch putter, and that's so difficult to to get that distance on a hundred footer yeah. with that style of putt, and he still gives it a chance. Easy cleanup for him, and Kevin and I are both going to be tapping out for the birdies. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Crowds love those tap ins, dude. In honor of Dane Gleesack, good man. <laughs> So we can see we got some good rounds going. I've actually got the lowest score of the round for 12 under, which I actually had no idea about just because Matt Bell was putting on such a putting show. But we're coming down to hole 26, the last par four on the course. A relatively short par four, but definitely still true to the par. You have to throw a, a placement shot off the tee and then get yourself up and down in this three tiered green that's very well elevated. a forced hyzer out of the hand for a right-handed player put yourself anywhere in there is just fine you just want to be able to give yourself a look at this green I think most of us are throwing something pretty overstable I'm just throwing an a3 up nice and letting it finish left <laughs> Kevin here and Angie from the tee <laughs> And that looks perfect as well. Yeah. All three of you guys are right in the same grouping area there. Pretty much ideal drop at the landing zone where you want to be. Damn. Yeah, I would say this is probably the, the easiest par four on the course. Yeah. But it definitely still makes you work because uh, this upshot is so important. You really want to get it close being up on that tiered green. It's easy to, to kind of come in right or left, maybe hit a rock and roll to about 30 feet, which is not easy on this elevated basket. You can see Matt kind of saws that off uncharacteristically. It's kind of a sucker shot to try to put it up on that up on the top tier. It I feel is. like if you're uh, close on the first tier or second tier, you got a pretty easy putt, but yeah, even where I am right there, I'm going to be about 25 feet. 
Yeah, to lay it up on the top of the tier there is kind of actually difficult because you even got to get a nice little backstop of the rocks on the backside if you want it to stay up there. Because you yeah, can run nice, it. It's nice to have a drop in birdie on this, but yeah, it's easy to, to run it too deep and then maybe get some reaction off the rocks. Yeah, yeah. You see Matt Bell. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. That's how you do oh, it. Yeah, there you go. That's a stress free birdie right there. Matty O. Wow. Great putt. Let him run it down. <laughs> there you go, buddy. We got some, you know, we got some battles going on right now for cashing positions among the top five. Kevin's got a, a pretty sizable lead going into the last hole, but we're all kind of trying to figure out where we're going to place. So every putt is important at this point. Yeah. There we go, Kev. There's a victory lap for him. And yeah, at this point, I kind of heard uh, Matt Bell when we were walking up to 27's T talking about talking about the position everyone was, was in and he was debating whether he should lay up or not. And so I was like, I better look at the score to see what's, what's going on here. And I was actually surprised to find myself only one stroke behind him for second place. Cause he had just been throwing everything in, but yeah, right. Well, we got the luxury could... of seeing it on U disc live. So, but when we're stepping up to this final hole now, hole 27, it is another Island and probably the most difficult of them all. Just because of these trees on the right, don't let you just throw a spike highs right at it. You have to throw a straighter shot to it. It's a little bit longer of a, of a hole than the previous islands. And you can see we do have the thick grass, which usually allows it to, to stick, but it's a difficult one to hit. <laughs> and Matty O is talking about using the, the UDIS scoring, which we had. We had the UDIS live going for this tournament, so he was able to see where he was, and he opted to lay up and play for his three and maintain his position for fourth or fifth place. And so Kevin Jones is obviously gonna, gonna hold on to his lead on this one, but I saw that, I was like, well, if I can get the birdie here and put some pressure on Matt Bell, maybe get a tie for second place. Oh, baby. Yeah, Kevin. That felt good. Shot. When you get on the green, it's it's actually uh, relieving. <laughs> and Kevin Jones with the six-stroke lead opting to lay up. I was a little bit surprised by that just because nice if shot. he goes out of bounds, he can jam that 35-footer from the drop zone all day. It was a great day, layup. But... It was a great layup. <laughs> <laughs> and Matt Bell also opting to lay up. I remember right before he threw that shot, he said... There's no shame in tying you for second place, so that was uh That's pretty it cool. It was nice that uh, if I can hit my putt wall oh. and get a second place finish. Oh. <laughs> but knowing him, he's still gonna run this one. Gave it a chance. Definitely gave it a chance. That was one of the most amazing putty rounds I've ever witnessed, I gotta say, for Matt Bell. So yeah. it was uh, It was very impressive to see Kevin Jones putting it close. And this is one of the more nerve wracking putts I've ever had. I got the the hometown crowd all want me to make it. Got about eighteen feet left. All right. Nothing to it. At least someone went for it. Great shot. <laughs> <laughs> Got Matt Orem. Appreciate him coming up to Minnesota and having a great tournament. That yeah, was great to see him out. Great to see Matt Bell. Matt Bell. Too. Amazing round. 
And I'm so proud of this dude right here, Kevin Jones. Yeah! Yeah. Huge victory right there. We got the defending champion, Alex Russell, presenting the trophy. That's a beautiful, yeah. majestic trophy we got with about 30 years of champions on there, some history. He's so stoked to raise that. I'm proud of him. He's a very gracious champion and, and someone you're always rooting for. Obviously, we all want to win that title, but went to a good dude. Got to thank everybody, UDIS Live, Parse Productions for, for giving us this amazing coverage that you guys are all hopefully going to enjoy. And Blue Ribbon yeah. Pines Disc Golf Club, one of the best in the world. Awesome. It was a pleasure. Good yeah, doing this with you, Mitch. Yeah, it was awesome, dude. It's an honor to be on this. So thank you again to Parsave, and thank you to Ray and all his workers that made this tournament happen. And thank you, Tommy, for running a great tournament again. Yes, sir. Minnesota Frisbee Association, come on up. Minnesota, play BRP, y'all. Thank you.